those key opponents. The world title challenge came when he fought Manny Pacquiao back in 2003. He is coming off that loss to Rocky Juarez. That was back on February 9th of this past year. And Jason Litzow, the second fight since the first loss of his career. Jason coming in at a tight 126 pounds. As far as the early fireworks, first round knockouts four, second round four, third five. One of those four first round knockouts happened in this very ring a year ago. Teddy Atlas now has the fight. A return to the scene of the crime. If you remember last year, my buddy here gave me an unexpected dip in the pool. He's smiling. Well, nothing unexpected about the fight plan tonight for Litzow against Lucero, his opponent. Litzow is taller, he's longer, he's gonna box on the outside, and I think he's gonna take advantage of Lucero coming in, bobbing and weaving, looking for big, fat punches. Look for Litzow, bang, pick him up with that uppercut, bang, left hook, and make a big splash tonight. And one of Lucero's goals tonight is to make sure he doesn't get all wet. I think I know how he's gonna have to do it. He's gonna have to get inside with that man, Litzow, who's taller and he's longer. And I also think I know how he's going to go about it. The only way he knows how, bobbing and weaving and throwing bombs. Look for him to come in here, bobbing and weaving, getting inside the reach of Litzow. And watch this first punch. Left hook, a throwaway punch, bang. Just to set him up for that big shot with the left hand down. And maybe, just maybe, Lucero can stay dry. Something I can't say for my friend right here. Ah, <laughs> oh, he thought Saul thought he was getting away with something there. Teddy wasn't making the move. Oh, but Mr. Atlas has people everywhere. Never forget. Never forget. Never forget. Jason Litzow. He is trained for this fight at Buddy McGirt's gym in Vero Beach, Florida. Worked hard to make that 126 pounds. He says nobody knows what he's gone through the last four years in his family life. A wonderful reception for Jason Litzow. He is popular everywhere he fights. Minnesota based, but with his style, the fans come out. Scheduled for 10, Jose Kobe on the referee. Nothing in the back of the head. Protect yourself at all times. Come back with the belt. Good luck. The Ring Experience is sponsored by Just For Men Hair Color. Lucero has fought for the world title. Of course, he has that experience. His experience a benefit, but also, Teddy, it could be an issue if he's a little too damaged with some of that big fight, big opponent experience. Yeah, the question always with guys like that that have been around and that have lost recently, what does he have left physically, and what does he have left emotionally and mentally? How much does he want to be able to take chances and get a little dirty. Does he still have the inside stuff to go deep in a fight and maybe deal with punishment to get the prize? Right off the bat, the height advantage is noticeable. Lits out five foot ten, Lucero five foot five. And don't forget, Lucero, we're talking about that he's fought the much better opposition, which he has, but he's been knocked out by that competition. Lucero knocked out in his last fight. Always difficult to go into a fight with anyone, especially a good fighter. When the last time you were in the ring, you did not finish. You don't know if you're okay. You don't know if you can depend on yourself the way that you had before. Sometimes it takes a fight, a comeback fight, to find that out. Well, Lucero has to find out right now. He's lost four of his last six. And three of those have been by knockout loss. Tries to come in with that jab to the body against the long Jason Litzow. Very wide stance and spread by Litzow. Well, one thing you have to like a little bit so far with Lucero is you're going to see it, I know, sooner or later, but he's not charging in like a bull just coming in that front door. He's the shorter man, but he's trying to find the right key to unlock the front door. He's using his legs to try to get an angle that will allow him
him to come in where he's not vulnerable by coming straight in. That's why you're seeing all this movement. He's trying to figure out a way to get forward stop, stop, stop. without Lipsau being set to punch. Stop. I'll say it right now, if Lipsau doesn't get caught anything big and fat, if he doesn't get caught wide punches, he's gonna win. Lucero. If he's gonna lose, Lucero's gonna catch him. Something that we all see coming. Maybe we all see coming except Litzau. Still utilizing those legs on the outside is Lucero. And now Litzau does get into the inside. And Lucero pauses for a moment, trying to avoid damage from that left hand. He got caught there. That is a knockdown. Joe, when you're coming off a knockout loss, you don't know how the guy's gonna behave. Right now, we're finding out something inside those caverns of the mind. Not the body, but the mind of Lucero. Stop, stop, stop. So Emmanuel Lucero was staying away from the power of Blitzow. And the one moment Blitzow finds it, Lucero didn't handle it well. We are here outside of San Diego. And one of the most famous native sons of this area just happens to be the Basketball Hall of Famer, Bill Walton. All the success, of course, at UCLA, the 1978 NBA MVP. And we're so proud to have him as part of our broadcast family on ESPN and ABC. And now our guest here on Friday Night Fights. I know you've really been enjoying your night, but tell me about your attraction to the fight game, Bill. I love the athleticism, and I really enjoy the intensity and the ferocity of the competitors who come out and train so hard. They're in fabulous physical condition, and what I really like is that much like the game of basketball, it's about the footwork, the balance, the mental acuity, but that speed and quickness always beats the power. Very good, Bill. I see that from those tapes there, I see that your body, your, your hair on your face, you know, your look has changed, but the mind has stayed consistent. Too many blows to the head, Teddy. You're still sharp. Now I think the question right here is whether or not Lucero will behave like a fighter. And what I mean by that, will he endure? Will this just be one last shot that he'll make? Sometimes guys that make up their mind, they're not gonna be around. They go out, believe it or not, like this, especially coming off a knockdown in the first round, though. They come out with everything fine, and if it works, great. If it doesn't work, you know what? They got one foot out the door. So much timidity by Lucero early on. I think that Litzau has tremendous respect for him. That's why we're not seeing that wild arm flailing that we're used to from Litzau. Well, you know, in your business, I'm sure that you had to size guys up. Did they go to their left? Did they go to their right? You know, when you got them in the paint, were they going to really go outside or were they going to challenge you in the paint? You had to know something about your opponent. Well, there's something about Lucero. He lays his head, Bill, on his right side. You see? Just do it there. And when you lay your head on the right side, if Litzau knows his opponent the way you used to know your opponents when you were playing that round ball, I think Litzau can knock out Lucero. He can place a right hand over on that side. Because when you lay your head on the right side, you are in the punching lane of right hands. Right now, a right hand from Litzau placed to the body. It has been an interesting round here as Lucero, oh, Lucero eats a left hook upstairs. Lucero came charging out after being floored at the end of that first round. Could it be one last effort? Can he sustain the offensive assault being put forth by Jason Litzau? Bill, do you like the overall style of Litzau, his presence when you see him? He's the more physically gifted boxer out here. And what he has to do is control this, but the sense of having to come back from the recent defeat that you highlighted so well. But now he's playing against, fighting against a man who appears to be stunned psychologically. Lucero does not appear confident to me. Coming off that Great. knockout loss, Teddy detailed that. That's always a big factor. How do you look the next time out? The doubts that you have in your own head. Well, inactivity six months ago with that knockout loss. He hasn't been in the ring since Lucero. And to go back to 
fights, he was off almost two years. So Lucero dealing with a lot. Well, he goes down again. Of difficult situations here tonight. Four, it was that right five, hand. Six, Driving four, downward, a right, right hand, out. the See, fight is over. Forget the right hand. The right hand put him in that position. But look right there at Lucero. That's what I was touching on, Bill. Does he want to behave like a fighter anymore? Is he prepared to go through the pains, go through those bad, shadowy places that a fighter has to go through to get to a good place? I would say we just found out that no, he wasn't prepared at this point in his career coming off that knockout loss to deal with those things. 28 years old, Teddy, and the psychological doubts starting to creep in. But Lucero is, is so small and he's so close to the ground to begin with. Even a stumble almost leads to a knockdown. Well, you know, you brought up a point. You said 28 years old. You know, it's a funny thing. In boxing, and I'm sure in your business a little bit, we do not judge the age of a fighter chronologically. We judge it by the amount of punches they've taken. And Lucero has taken punches that have made him feel a little older than 28. And he couldn't get inside to get that tight punch that you described in your fight plan earlier. It looked like he's actually been pushed into the pool himself. Oh, oh. Let's take a look back at how Jason Litzow finished off Emmanuel Lucero. This is the knockdown in the first round. And you could see that, again, Lucero has that habit of getting very low, getting out of position. You can get low, but you got to stay in position. He gets out of position. And when he's out of position, he has no control over the shots coming. Now, there's the right hand that we were highlighting, we were looking for. And there is the stumble that Bill talked about. And there, of course, is the victor, Mr. Litzow. Jason Litzow. Boy, this ring serves him well. Last year, a first-round knockout. This year here, a second-round knockout. To make it official, get the particulars, we send it up to Joe Martinez. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes. Two minutes, 48 seconds of round number one for your winner by knockout victory, the American boy, Jason Litzow. We will have much more with Bill Walton throughout the rest of the night. Jason Litzow with the knockout win, the 19th knockout of his career, 22nd win. Let's send it back to Robert Forrest and Vernon Forrest. Okay, guys, thanks. Vernon, uh, you're familiar uh, with Jason Litzow. Uh, both of you guys work with uh, Buddy McGirt. Uh, your thoughts on uh, Jason's performance tonight? Oh, it looked fabulous. It was a fantastic uh, performance tonight. Uh, he showed that uh, you know, he came in to fight looking real, real sharp. He looked, he looked real fit. And he